again uh, to this lesson uh, biology uh, form 3 uh, we are going to look at parts and function of the uh, plant cells uh, initially we looked at the, uh, some of the uh, issues uh, pertaining to uh, photosynthesis but now uh, we are supposed to look at the what uh, are the parts of the uh, plant cell uh, once again, uh, you are with me, uh, Bellington uh, Kamisa. Uh, now, what are the specific objectives under this topic, lesson topic? Uh, by the end of this lesson, you as students, you are supposed to do the following to identify the parts of the plant and their functions. Uh, secondly, you have to describe the process of photosynthesis. You need to understand uh, uh, how it takes place. Uh, plant cell, uh, generally, uh, you look at the plant cell. We need to define what a cell is all about. So plants and animals are also having the cells. But now, well, how do we define the term uh, cell? A cell is a basic unit of life for all living things. So we can say a cell is defined as something which builds the, the organism. So those are the building blocks. So cells are building blocks for all living organisms. So we can say it's a unit of life. So a cell is a unit of life for all living organisms. There we include plants as well as the animals. Uh, now, a plant cell has got uh, different uh, parts. Remember, in Form 1, you looked at the differences between an animal cell and a plant cell. But here, we are going to dwell very much on a plant cell. So, the plant cell consists of several parts. For example, it has the cell wall, it has the cell membrane, it has the goji body, it has endoplasmic reticulum, so we have several others. Let us see in the next slide. Uh, we have also the mitochondria. Uh, we have the nucleus. We have the vacuum. We have the rhizome. We have the cytoplasm as well as the chloroplast. So these are some of the uh, parts of the uh, plants, <coughs> parts of the uh, uh, of the cell plant or plant cell that are actually uh, found in them. So we will look at uh, the details under them. Now, if you look at these structures that I have just mentioned, uh, when you examine uh, this plant cell under the light uh, electron microscope, you are likely to see those parts. So we have the cell wall, as this is the cell wall, all throughout. Then we have the cell membrane, which is this uh, uh, membrane here, is the cell membrane. Then we have the Golgi apparatus, which forms this structure here. It's the Golgi apparatus. Then we have the Golgi vesicles. We have the ribosomes. These are the, the dot ones. And here, indeed, we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This one is smooth. And that, that one is rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then here we have the chloroplast. These are the chloroplast, this one and that one. So here we have the, the raphid crystal, this one. Then we have also the, 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 the druze crystal, this one. Uh, we have the mitochondria. So you can see the, the plant cell is concentrated with the, the mitochondria. So we have amyloplast which is the starch gland, this one. Then you have the large central vacuum, central vacuum. This one is the central uh, vacuum. So this, the whole of this is the central vacuum. So these are some of the parts of um, the plant cell. But now we are going to look at how these uh, parts perform. What functions are, are they playing? Their roles in relation to the photosynthesis. Now let us look at the functions of the uh, parts of the plant cell. So uh, the cell wall. We start with the cell wall. Now what are some of the properties of the cell wall? A cell wall consists surrounded, uh, this one surrounds the whole plant cell. 
So that's one of the properties there to surround the whole part of the plant's uh, cell. So it's made up of a tough sugar, which is a polysaccharide called cellulose. So it is made up of a tough carbohydrate, which is the, uh, the cellulose, another uh, uh, property. Uh, the fungal cell was contained, so this one, uh, the fungal cell was also contained the, the, the same, uh, the same tough carbohydrate, which is the sugar. So we have the single, uh, fungal cell also contain the same uh, carbohydrate. So let us look at the functions of a cell wall. What functions are they, the cell wall performing? <clears throat> So we are saying it gives uh, mechanical support to the cell and therefore the whole plant. So generally, the uh, cell wall, uh, since it's made up of a tough polysaccharide, then we are saying it is providing support. Determines the shape and size of the cell, even if the protoplasm collapses. Protoplasm, we mean to say the, the living part of the cell, uh, uh, the nucleus and the cytoplasm forms what we call the protoplasm when this one uh, uh, collapses due to loss of water through osmosis or when a cell dies off, the shape is still maintained due to the presence of the cell wall. So it prevents the cell from bursting by a process known as lysis. Generally, we call it the plasmolysis. Uh, plasmolysis, for example, when the cell has lost water, we call the, that one plasmolysis. But now when the, the cell has gained more water, it becomes targed or it burges. And because it burges, then this can lead to bursting. But uh, the cell wall is there to prevent the bursting of the cell. Uh, again, it protects the underlying elastic cell membrane. It is there to protect the cell membrane and other internal contents of the uh, cell. That's the uh, the, the, the cell wall. Now let us look at the cell membrane as another structure of the plant cell, the cell membrane. The cell membrane has a number of pro properties and these are highlighted here. So it is very thin uh, semi-permeable flexible membrane that, uh, that surround each and every cell. Uh, this membrane we are saying is very thin which helps the diff fast diffusion of uh, substances, oxygen diffusing into the cell and uh, out of the cell, and again, carbon dioxide diffusing into the cell. So that's why we say it's impermeable, selective. This term means it is selective. Secondly, it allows only small molecules such as water plus glucose to pass through it. That's why we are saying it is uh, impermeable in nature. It is there to allow some molecules to pass through, and those that are large are denied to pass through it. It is selectively permeable, that is, it allows some molecules, uh, small molecules, to pass through to enter the cell, and the large ones to pass uh, does not allow the large ones to pass through the, uh, the cell membrane. So, generally, that's why we say it is selective. So those that are large molecules are, uh, cannot pass through the very same cell membrane. Functions of the cell membrane, it serves as a continuous bounding envelope, which means it covers, it protects the internal part of the cell. That's why it's a bounding envelope. Now we are saying it, it plays an active role in controlling and regulating uh, the flow of molecules into and out of the cell. So it can minimize, it can control the amount of substances that enters and leave out, leave the cell uh, uh, outside, or they leave the cell um, and they move outside it. So the substance move in and out of the cell by the following physiological processes. So sometimes substances may enter the cell and leave the cell. So there are certain terms that we use to describe the movement of substances that enter and leave the cell. For example, some of the substances that are required by the plant cells, we talk of water. Water is taken as a raw uh, material for food making process and water moves into the cell by the process of what? Osmosis. So osmosis is one of the physiological process whereby water enters the cell. 
So we can say uh, osmosis can also be defined as a net movement of water molecules from a region of low concent high concentration of water molecules to a region of higher, lower water molecules. So therefore, we are saying uh, gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide move by simple diffusion. So diffusion is just another physiological process whereby substances can live out of the cell. Once oxygen is produced inside the cell, it diffuses outside. Yeah. So through the same cell membrane. So some substances move against concentration gradient. Uh, which is called active transport. So the movement of nitrate ions from the soil into the root uh, cells, even if there is a uh, low concentration in the soil than in the root. So here we are talking of movement of mineral salts from the soil into the root hairs. Now, in the root hairs, we have more uh, 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 mineral ions than compared to the soil. So therefore, they, these mineral ions, they diffuse. Nitrate ions, they, they, they move by means of active transport where the expenditure of energy is required. Now we have another mitochondria. Now mitochondria is often described as power plants of the cell. It's a powerhouse for the plant cells and generally uh, uh, when viewed through the electron microscope, it appears as an ovoid or sausage-shaped organelle. So this one looks or appears like a sausage when you view it under the electron microscope. So uh, how do we now pronounce them? When we uh, have one singular way, singular form, we say mitochondrion. Mitochondrion is when you have one uh, structure, but more than one, we are talking of mitochondria. So this is plural and this is singular. Yeah. So it is a double membrane, a membrane organelle, which means it has two membranes. It is bound by two membranes. That's what it means by double membrane. So a mitochondria is a double membrane, meaning it has two membranes. Now its inner is highly uh, folded. It's highly folded into crystal. And the uh, this increases surface area for respiration. So generally, it is highly folded into crystal. Yeah, it's highly folded uh, into crystal. So here we are supposed to have uh, folded here. So the matrix contains ribosomes and loops of uh, DNA. So generally, the matrix uh, contains ribosomes which uh, synthesize the proteins and the loops of DNA which carries genetic material. So the uh, mitochondria has got also enzymes which are involved in different stages of uh, respiration uh, that are found on this crystal. So the crystal is a, a region where you find that there are a lot of enzymes and enzymes are substances that catalyze, they speed up the chemical reaction of respiration. So therefore, the mitochondria contains a, a, a crystal where now uh, the, you find that there are enzymes which can speed up the rate of what? Respiration. Now, let us look at the diagram of the mitochondria. So this is, in general, the diagram uh, for the uh, mitochondria. Uh, uh, remember, this should be the mitochondrion. Uh, now, if you look at this, it's, uh, it's a double membrane. So we have the outer membrane, which is this one, and we have the uh, inner membrane, which is this uh, membrane here. So this membrane is called the inner membrane. So that's why we say, because we have two membranes, this and this one, we say this is a double uh, membrane organelle. So therefore, the membrane has the ribosomes here. They make the, the proteins. And this, is, this structure here is the crystal. This uh, structure, crystal, then crystal. Then we have also the crystal, we have the crystal. All that structure. Now we have the granules that are inside here. The granules. We have the matrix. In, within this, we have the matrix there. 
So we have intermembrane space. There is a space here. So inside here, inside the crystal, we have what we call the matrix now. Then we have the DNA, this strand here, and this other one is the DNA, which keeps the genetic material for uh, this one. So mainly this uh, mitochondrion is a main site for photosynthesis, uh, for respiration. Sorry. So we are saying function of the mitochondrion, it is the main site for respiration to generate ATP for cellular activities. And when we talk of cellular activities, we are looking at the ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So ATP is an acronym which stands for adenosine triphosphate. Now this adenosine triphosphate is basically used for cellular activities. And one of the cellular activities is active transport in plant cells. Active transport uh, where energy is required to transport food substances to different parts of the plant and to transport some of the mineral ions as we have already alluded to. So generally, that's what we are looking at. Then let us come to chloroplasts. We have the plant cell has got also what we call the chloroplasts. These are found inside the photosynthetic tissues of plants and some pro protoctes. So uh, you can find them in plants, in tissues of plants, and in some protoctes. So they are very abundant in the parasite mesophyll cells of leaves. So the chloroplasts are very, you find they are plenty in the uh, uh, parasite mesophyll uh, layer of the cells. Remember, in, in the previous lesson, we said that the parasite mesophyll layer consists of the parasite cells. Now, those cells are having a lot of the chloroplast, which is an adaptation for food making uh, process. So, belonging to the, uh, they belong to a group of organelles which we call the plastids. So, the, some of the examples of the plastids, we are looking at the chloroplast. So, chloroplasts are also a group of organelles called the plastids. We call them the plastids, many of which they contain the pigments. And these pigments, we call them the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment, and generally, um, we, apart from chlorophyll, we have also uh, xanthophyll, we have also carotene, apart from the, 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 uh, the, the chlorophyll itself, we have the xanthophyll, we have also the carotene. Now, these are similar in size to the mitochondria and the like mitochondria, they have double membrane. So the chloroplast is like the, um, the, 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 the mitochondrion. It has also the double membrane, meaning to say it has two membranes, the inner membrane and the outer membrane. So within the stroma is a network of flattened sacs called thylakoids. So inside we have the stroma, which consists of a network of flattened sacs, which we call them the thylakoids. And these thylakoids are like piles of coins when we view them inside the chloroplast. So the plural form is granum, and singular form we call granum. Granum one, uh, plural many we call grana. We call it grana. There is a spelling there, need to be edited. G R A N A. So it's supposed to be grana. So these are formed when many of these thylakoids are stacked together like piles of coins. So a granum is formed when uh, we stack these uh, grana uh, as piles of coins. So the chlorophyll, uh, the, the chlorophyll molecules consists of chlorophyll molecules. So the chloroplasts contain the chlorophyll molecules which trap light energy uh, and are located within the thylakoids of each granum. So generally, the chloroplasts were saying they contain the chlorophyll molecules which trap light energy and are located within the thylakoids. So the chloroplasts contain what we call the stroma, now which has enzymes involved in the reaction of photosynthesis. So in the stroma, we have the enzymes that are driving the uh, reactions of photosynthesis 
mainly the dark stage. So this gives a detailed structure of the chloroplast. Now you can see uh, these are grana. Behold, this is grana now. This one is another grana. Grana is like a, a pile of coins. So when we extract, we, can, we have a cross section of the chloroplast here. We are able to view that we have the granum, which is like a pile of the coins. The whole of this is taken as a granum, but more of this than we are talking of grana. Grana. So we have the inner membrane of lamella, then the outer membrane is this one. So remember, a chloroplast is also a double membrane. So we have the granum, we have the uh, lumen. Lumen is just like inside here. Then we have chloroplast DNA. This is a chloroplast DNA. This one is inner membrane lamella. So this one is inner membrane lamella. Now, when we remove this, we have this uh, structure now. We have fluid field space here. We have inner membrane, then we have outer membrane. We have this space now is the stroma here. All that space is stroma. Then this one is the granum. As I said, this part is granum. And this one is lamella. This part here is lamella, which connects the two grana. So the structure which connects the two grana is called the lamella. These are lamella. Lamella. These, these ones. So we have chloroplasts. We have the ribosome, all those. So we have the starch glenu. This is the starch glenu, starch glenu. So all these are the, the grana. Right, so now let us look, continue. Uh, functions of the chloroplast. Now we have to look at the functions of a chloroplast. Now the chloroplast, they are to trap light energy. Uh, using the chlorophyll. So the function of the chlorophyll which is contained in the chloroplast is to trap sunlight energy or solar energy. So the light is used in during the process of photosynthesis. So this light is a necessary condition for photosynthesis. So uh, chloroplasts are plastids that consist of carotenoids which are a group of red and yellow pigments found in carrots and even some ripe tomatoes, so it's uh, under the carotenoids. So it has amyroplasts, amyroplasts, which store starch and are common in cells of storage organs, such as potatoes and cotyledons, among others. Next slide, let us look at the nucleus. Now the nucleus forms the protoplasm of a cell together with the cytoplasm. So we can see that the protoplasm is the living part of the cell. So the nucleus and the cytoplasm are the ones that forms the term protoplasm. So the living part of the cell is named, known as the protoplasm. So we have, um, it's, it's large and oval in shape. So the nucleus is large in size and is in terms of shape, we say it's oval. Now it's made up of nuclear material known as nucleoplasm. So it is enclosed by a nuclear membrane. So the nucleus is enclosed by the nuclear membrane. And um, let us look at the function of the nucleus. So the nucleus controls the activities of the cell and heredity, like passing on the traits from parents to offsprings. So generally, the nucleus carries genetic material, which control characteristics in plants as well as in animals. So generally, the other activities which are controlled by the nucleus is cell division. We have mitosis as well as the meiosis. So generally, these are some of the cell, cell activities that are controlled by the nucleus. The cell division, and it carries genetic material which can pass to the parents. That's the heredity now. We are looking at inheritance of traits from parents to offsprings. That's the main function of the nucleus. That's controlling activities of the cell. And some of the activities of the cell is cell division, we talk of heredity and the others. Now we have the ribosomes. 
ribosomes, these are small spherical organelles, some are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the others float freely in the cytoplasm. So we have some ribosomes which are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, that's why we call it rough. Uh, we'll look at that one under endoplasmic reticulum. So basically the main function of the ribosomes is to, synth to synthesize. To synthesize is to build or manufacture proteins and assemble them from amino acids ready for transportation. So therefore the ribosomes are used as to protein synthesis of manufacturing proteins and the gathering them ready in readiness for transportation to different parts of the plant where they are used for plant growth. Now we have, here we are, we have the endoplasmic reticulum. So the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, these are systems of uh, canals, or we call them the channels within the cytoplasm. So uh, it appears as rough endoplasmic reticulum, and we have also the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So we call it a rough endoplasmic reticulum because it provides a surface here, a surface for attachment of ribosomes. Because it is having a ribosomes attached to it, that's why we call it, it becomes rough when you look at it. Then we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This one has no uh, any element of ribosomes. So the rough endoplasmic uh, reticulum, we are saying, provides a surface for attachment of ribosomes. We have also proteins, which are made by these ribosomes, enter the rough endoplasmic reticulum to be transported to places where they are required. So we can say, once the ribosomes have manufactured the pro proteins, these are transported by the rough endoplasmic reticulum to where they are required. You have to take note that the endoplasmic reticulum is not covered with the ribosomes. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum basically is not covered with the ribosomes. Now let us look at the vacuoles. The vacuoles. Now in plants, they are very large, unlike in animals, where they are very small. They are filled with the serosap. In the serosap, you find that the the dissolved substances, sugars, proteins are also there, the salts and the others. So it holds the plants upright when filled with water. When the cell sap is filled with water, the cell budges and that provides support. They store amino acids, salts and waste products, that's the, the vacuoles. Now the main function is that they help in the elimination of excess water and waste product. Uh, that's their, their main uh, function. They are there to eliminate excess water as well as waste products that are made during metabolism. So we have also the rhizosomes. These are small vacuoles which are formed when small pieces of the goji body are pinched off or breaks off at the end. So they contain a variety of hydrolytic enzymes which can digest the material in the cell. So the ribosome, rhizosomes have got rib hydrolytic enzymes which can digest uh, uh, the materials in the cell. So the rhizosomes, they have the membrane uh, uh, around the rhizosome prevents these enzymes from digesting the cell itself. So we have, the, the enzymes are not digesting the cell itself because it is uh, surrounded by the membrane. Then the main function of these rhizosomes is linked to the actions of these enzymes and these are, we are talk of the rhizosomes, release enzymes that can destroy worn out organelles in the cell. So we have some cells that are, dis that are worn out in, our in uh, the, the plants as well as in the bodies of animals and these en en uh, enzymes are there to break down those. So they digest materials that are taken into the cell, so they can also digest the different materials that are taken into the uh, cell. So we have the rhizosomes. Uh, these rhizosomes, rhizosomes, sorry, they release their enzymes to the outside of the cell to digest other cells by the process called exocytosis. So we are saying, um, the rhizosomes release enzymes that work outside of the cell by the process of what? Excitos 
exocytosis. Uh, having looked at the parts of the plant cell, uh, basically we have seen that the uh, one of the important parts of the plant cells that they have the chloroplasts where now they carry out the process of photosynthesis. So mainly photosynthesis takes place in a chloroplast. That's why you were supposed to know the, uh, the, the, the parts of the plant cell. So now in this case, uh, this lesson, in this uh, uh, subtopic, you are going to look at photosynthesis as a process. Remember, being a process, it means it is occurring into stages. Uh, let, uh, let me try to remind you the definition of uh, photosynthesis. Uh, remember, we defined it uh, in the first lesson. Uh, here, in your own language, what do you understand by the term photosynthesis? Uh, here, we can define it as a process whereby plant cells through chloroplasts combine water and carbon dioxide to produce glucose as a main product and oxygen as a byproduct. So, Oxygen is taken as a byproduct of photosynthesis. Uh, maybe we can say, uh, what is a byproduct? A byproduct is a substance which is produced besides a main product. So that's what we can say. Now, photosynthesis as a process requires solar energy. So the solar energy is used to drive this chemical process. So generally, it is trapped by chlorophyll and converted to chemical energy. Remember, we said that chlorophyll is, com is contained in the chloroplast. It's a green pigment which traps solar energy. So uh, solar energy is very important as far as the uh, photosynthesis is, con is concerned. So it is used as a, a, a necessary condition together with the chlorophyll. Uh, let us look at some of the chemical equations. Uh, equations for photosynthesis. We have what we call a word equation. We have also a chemical equation. So this one is known as a word uh, equation. So under a word equation, we have water combining with carbon dioxide in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight. So chlorophyll and sunlight are the two necessary conditions for photosynthesis to take place. So what are the products? Here products, we have glucose, we have also oxygen, which is produced as a byproduct. But generally, glucose now is immediately converted to starch so that it can be easily stored to prevent evaporation. Because if it is any glucose form or any solution form, it can be, it can be lost through evaporation. That's why glucose is immediately converted to uh, starch. Then let us look at a balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. Now we have, here we are, water reacting with carbon dioxide. So water and carbon dioxide, this one is taken as the two raw materials and they are taken as the reactants. If we put a six here, it means we have, here we have 12 hydrogen because to be 6 times 2, subscript 2, which is 12. And here on the oxygens, we have the subscript 1 here. So 6 times 1, it means here we have 6 molecules of oxygen here. Then again, here we multiply 6 times 2, we have uh, 12. 12 plus the 6 here, we are making 6, uh, 18 oxygen atoms on the reactants. We have to balance again the oxygen atoms in the uh, product part. So if we put a 6 here, we have 6 times 2, which is 12. Now 12 plus this uh, 6 oxygen atoms, we make it 18. Now we have, balanced, uh, we have balanced the equation now. So this is a chemical uh, equation for the process of photosynthesis. Yeah, so if they say right, the equa equa chemical equation for photosynthesis is this one, a balanced one. Now, as I said, uh, photosynthesis takes place in two main stages, and these are a light-dependent stage. Uh, during the light-dependent stage, remember, 
This one requires light. That's why we call it light dependent stage. It depends very much on the light. <clears throat> so where does this uh, light dependent stage take place? We are saying it takes place in the granum. That's why we are supposed to learn the granum. That's where light stage uh, takes place. Then it is the first stage of photosynthesis and we have said that it relies very much on the light. So it requires solar energy. Now this light energy from the sun is absorbed by chlorophyll and converted to chemical energy which is called ATP, an acronym which stands for adenosine triphosphate. So this process is called photophosphorylation, whereby solar energy is being converted to ATP. The process is called photophosphorylation. Now, this light energy is used to break, to split water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen by a process called photolysis. So this energy, you know, water being a polar molecule is having hydrogen and oxygen bonds. So to break those hydrogen and oxygen bonds requires a lot of energy. And it is this ATP which is used to, to split water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen atoms. So the process whereby water molecules split into hydrogen and oxygen atoms is called photolysis. Photo is to do with light and lysis is to break. So therefore, uh, water breaking using light in simple terms, that's what we can say about photo photolysis. Now, the oxygen atoms, when it, they are rearranged, they combine chemically to form oxygen molecules which are used in respiration and excess oxygen uh, moves out of the leaf, out of the cell, uh, through the stomates, which you and me can enjoy, can use it during respiration. Yeah. So therefore, what remains with the hydrogen, the hydrogen now is used in the second stage of uh, uh, photosynthesis. Now we have the hydrogen molecules which be, uh, become the raw materials for the second stage of uh, uh, photosynthesis. Now uh, let us look at the second stage of uh, photosynthesis which is now the right independent stage. This one we are saying uh, it is sometimes called the dark stage. So the right independent stage is sometimes called the dark stage of photosynthesis. Why do we call it dark stage? It is dark stage because it does not need light. Not that it takes place during night. Remember, photosynthesis only takes place during the day. But we call it dark stage uh, of photosynthesis uh, because it does not require light energy. So where does it take place? We are saying it takes place in the stroma inside a chloroplast. It does not require energy, that's why we, see, we call it the dark stage. In this stage, hydrogen atoms react with carbon dioxide to produce glucose by a process called the reduction process. Yeah, so therefore, during the light-independent light stage or dark stage of photosynthesis, uh, glucose is produced as a, a product. And you can also see that it, in the, in the light stage, in the light dependent stage, uh, oxygen is produced as a byproduct. Oxygen as well as the hydrogen are produced in the light stage. But now, in the light independent stage, which is known, known as the, the dark stage, we have the uh, carbon dioxide reacting with the uh, hydrogen to produce glucose by the process known as what? The reduction process. So the excess glucose molecules combine chemically with each other to produce starch, so which means the glucose made is chemically converted to starch, which is a polysaccharide by a process known as condensation reaction. So the condensation reaction produces starch together with the water. That's why we call it condensation reaction. So finally, the starch then stored in fruits as well as the tubers like cassava tubers and the others. Then this diagram shows us the schematic diagram, which shows us the, how, where the process of photosynthesis is just trying 
to summarize the process of photosynthesis. You can see the solar energy, which is uh, used in the granum, where the light uh, dependent stage takes place, or the light stage of photosynthesis takes place in the granum here. It is this place now. So this light is used to split water molecule. Here, as we can see, this water molecule now, when it gets into the chloroplast, the water is split into hydrogen ions plus oxygen. So oxygen now we see that it is diffusing outside into the atmosphere through the stomachs, which will be used by the organisms. Then again, um, here we see that we have the stroma now, this portion, these spaces, we have the stroma here, where now the carbon dioxide enters the, the, the plant cell, where now carbon dioxide is used as a raw material, and the hydrogen produced from the right stage uh, now is used as a raw material, is used to combine these two. Since it is an ion, ion it is reduced now into glucose. So glucose is produced when carbon dioxide reacts with hydrogen ions from the light stage. So therefore, now the glucose now is produced, which is now uh, converted to uh, the polysaccharide, to starch and the others. So here we have out, we have the sucrose, which is uh, stored. Sometimes we have the starch granule, which can store the, the, the glucose. So we see that the glucose now is converted to starch, which is sto uh, stored in the starch granules. Yeah, so here we are just show, they are just showing the we have the light energy which is used during the light stage in the granium. Now the water is split into the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Then in the dark stage here, carbon dioxide is used as a raw material. Then the glucose is formed as a product of the dark stage or the light independent stage. That's the the issue that is surrounding this uh, diagram. Uh, then uh, at the end of this, I have uh, the I have the exercise, which are practice questions. You have to fill in the table on the various parts of the cell and their functions. Then we have part of the cell. We have the cell wall. We have the function here. Uh, function. They have hidden something here. So which means you have to, to fill in what part does this function. The ribosomes, you have to mention the function here. Then likewise here, they have given the function. You have to name the plants, uh, the part of the plant here, the same. Chloroplast, state the function. Here, the function, then you list there. You fill in the table. Then you have to mention any five parts of plant cell and their functions, 10 marks, to differentiate between light and dark stages of photosynthesis, one mark. You have to list the product of the following, light stage of photosynthesis, dark stage of photosynthesis. All together they are making two marks. You have to state the part of the chloroplast in which each of the stages of photosynthesis takes place. For example, you have to mention where this takes place, then this one takes place. So um, after you have answered this one here with me, you will uh, compare with my provisional answers for this exercise. I uh, thank you very much for being such a good audience. So in the next lesson, we'll look at what happens to glucose, the effect, effect of glucose after photosynthesis. Fate of glucose will simply mean to say what happens to glucose after it has been produced. And indeed, we have seen that glucose has been produced in the dark stage of photosynthesis. So we must see what happens. Then we'll also look at the mineral elements that are in relation to photosynthesis. We'll finally look at the experiment that we can conduct to show that indeed photosynthesis, uh, fresh leaves contains green pigments. So also close the topic by looking at the uh, by looking at the functions of photosynthesis. Expect to see you there. Thank you very much.